Hey guys, you ever wonder how much grass a single grass seed can put out over the course of a year? It's a lot more than you realize. And I know this for a fact, for a variety of reasons, but the most obvious reason is because I planted a single seed, a single grass seed in a pot, a very, very tiny pot, 16 months ago. We're talking one year and four months ago. It might be one year and five months ago I put seed down just for the purpose of watching the single seed grow over the over a long period of time i actually put what is it uh i have eight two three four five six seven i put seven grass seeds down seven different varieties two of those varieties have died off my cat literally killed them back when they were babies my cat actually grabbed them and yanked them out and probably ate them threw them up somewhere but i have five remaining let me show you if you're a longtime viewer of turf mechanic videos, then you no doubt have noticed this sitting right here at the end of my driveway for more than a year. Sometimes it's over there, sometimes it's over here. But what I want to show you is in December of 2022, I took a single seed of creeping red fescue and I planted it here. A single seed of buffalo grass, a single seed of Kentucky 31 tall fescue, a single seed of turf type tall fescue. This was a single seed of perennial rye. This was an annual rye that my cat yanked out of the ground. And this here in the middle was a single seed of Kentucky bluegrass that the cat yanked out of the ground. But as you can tell, despite the fact that these grass plants have a very shallow rooting depth, there's very minimal soil in here. Everything dries out extremely fast and easily. And I only every now and then give water to these things to keep them alive. All of these grasses have continued growing nevertheless. Creeping red fescue is a rhizomatic grass type, which means it's a cool season grass that grows rhizomes underground. So one seed in the middle, as you can tell, has resulted in grass covering the entire cell. So this entire cell is about maybe two and a half inches in diameter. So all this whole thing was fully covered up with a single seed of creeping red fescue. Buffalo grass is a warm season grass. It has stolons. Here's a stolon that's growing way over here. This grass does not have underground rhizomes. So you notice it is growing out laterally in all directions, but the dirt, it's not covered up. The reason for that is it's not growing underground and putting up new shoots from underground. This is gonna have complete full coverage of the dirt over time if it's got other plants sending out above ground stolons in all directions. So a plant right here would be sending a stolon this way, covering up that dirt, a plant would here would be doing the same thing. So all of the plants kind of like hold fingers, like they intertwine their fingers together, these little stolons, and it ends up covering the ground. The stolons eventually reroot down as this one has done. So this stolon right here has come over here into where I originally planted Kentucky bluegrass, and it's rerooted. And then the stolon has continued going and I think it's trying to reroot there, but it didn't quite do it. It's trying to. Now, once we get into the fescues, let me turn this, turn my body, so that we're not seeing my shadow here. These fescues are looking very rough because I don't water them enough. But nevertheless, this is Kentucky 31 tall fescue. You can see how rough the leaf blade is and how uh, obvious the um, the, that vein system is, that textured vein system is going down the, uh, the blade, and how wide the blade is compared to turf type tall fescue. Turf type, you have to get in really close and you can still see the same texturing, but it's, uh, it's tighter. It's tighter texturing and the blade isn't quite as wide. It's, I mean, this looks more like lawn grass and this looks more like weed grass. And that's the reason why people put turf type tall fescue in their lawns as opposed to Kentucky 31. Kentucky 31, if we look straight down on it, it starts spreading out in different directions. Not exactly stolons going out in each direction, but the leaf system wants to just lay over um, in like a star pattern, like a circular pattern. Whereas the turf type is going to go more upright. 
since both of these plants were grown from one single seed, you can tell that the crown of this plant is much more wide and you almost have a little gap in the middle, but you can barely see the cell at all. So, I mean, I could pull off some of this, uh, these old dead leaves and you start seeing more of the ground underneath, more of the soil underneath. But if you have a single seed of Kentucky 31, it's gonna spread out pretty noticeably over a long period of time. However, it's not gonna give you a very good texture at all. Similarly, a single seed of turf type tall fescue is going to give you more of that clump feel because it's not spreading out as wide. The leaf blades and the crowns want to go upright a little bit more as opposed to this where they want to branch outwards. Both plants are certainly going to tiller. This is what all of these are. They're tillering. And that's how it's not like it's spreading. It's just the plant is becoming bigger. So each plant will get bigger over time and cover a lot of space. But the turf type tall fescue is literally gonna give you a little bit more uh, upward volume because the tillering system of this doesn't lay down the way it does with Kentucky 31. Now perennial rye is very similar to the turf type tall fescue. It's still got that same lump sort of shape to it. The blades are still not as wide as the turf type tall fescue and the blades don't have the same texturing that the turf type tall fescue has, but they're both clumping grasses. So as the single grass blade comes up and then it starts tillering out over a long period of time, that one plant can get fairly substantial, but it takes a lot of time. Now, if you think to yourself here, this entire tray is, I don't know, something like a 10 inch diameter kind of a thing. If the root systems were deeper, if this had more soil to grow in, and if I had managed moisture better in these plants, like if I had truly cared for these plants like a child, then every single one of these plants would actually be healthier. They, uh, the grass blades would be more vibrant, they'd be taller, they'd be thicker, they'd be greener, you'd see less dead material in them, and they would have probably tillered out even wider which means that once you go into a real lawn setting and you see very large clumps of grass in your lawn, you can't be sure, but it's a pretty good guess that every single very large clump of grass in your lawn could be one single plant that was grown from one single seed and maybe everything else around it died, but that one plant still remains. And that's because in the lawn, you don't have a three root <laughs> a three inch deep pad of soil for it to be growing in. It could grow infinitely, relatively speaking. Uh, fescues can, you know, have feet, multiple feet of root systems down there. Buffalo grass could be like, even buffalo grass could be well in excess of three feet of, of root depth. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the single blade of Kentucky bluegrass anymore, but everything that you see here in this yard space is Kentucky bluegrass. And everything looks really nice and healthy and thick. I put down a normal amount of seed to, to achieve this. However, over here, I had some damage and some of the grass died off a little bit. So when you look down here, this is all Kentucky bluegrass. It's very, very thin. But in time, every single one of these plants, and you think to yourself, every one of the plants over there tillered out with very like neglected care for a full year, and they still tillered out to be about two inches wide. So when you look at any single plant that's in here, and you think to yourself, if I care for this, if I tend to it, each one of those can tiller out two inches wide or more. And certainly with the Kentucky bluegrass, with its underground rhizomatic system, it will spread out underground and then send up new shoots. So all of this can be completely repaired without putting any seed down whatsoever. Anyway, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I actually want to pull all of those plants out of that planter. It's been there for over a year now and it's not really an attractive thing to have on the curb. So I wanted to pull them out and do something better with it. 
So I'm gonna repot them somehow or other. I'm gonna figure that out in the next day or two. So I'll leave you with me uh, pulling them out. You can take a look at the root systems along with me. I haven't looked at those root systems yet, but I'm kind of assuming that at the bottom, each one of those cells, I've probably got a pretty dense like root mass that's probably circling around. So we'll see. All right, let's start with the creeping red fescue. Just kind of push it up from the bottom. I'm gonna pull it out. This is dry. I haven't watered it. So there we go. We've got this spiraling action of roots, root mass there on the bottom. It's all circling around the edges. <laughs> Here's your annual or your perennial ryegrass. Uh, this seems to have more of the root mass down at the bottom and less on the sides. Kind of just an interesting observation. Turf type tall fescue, known to be a deeper rooter than perennial rye, has a much more substantial root mass down at the bottom of the cell. Kentucky 31 tall fescue, it's kind of similar. This one just doesn't seem to be thriving nearly as much. It gets the same amount of water and care as, as the turf type, but it sure is scraggly looking. Even the roots don't look quite as nice. Now here's the buffalo grass. This one is crazy, man. So the buffalo grass up top, it looks thin, right? It doesn't look like it's covering much, like it's long, it's got stolons. But look at the bottom. Like you don't even see dirt there. Those roots want so badly to just go forever deep into the ground. Warm season grasses like buffalo grass really want to root down deep. And that's how they can get through hot summers, hot, dry summers. This really needs to be potted up. So anyway, I don't know if that really fully answers your question. How big does a single seed of grass, how, how much grass can it make? It can make a lot more than most people realize. It is not one seed for one blade of grass. It's one seed for per clump of grass. And in some cases, that clump of grass can spread quite significantly. Here on this channel, I make videos kind of about grass. These are not very scripted. Most of the time, not scripted at all. So I hope you enjoy content like this. If you do, hit the subscribe button and watch another video here on the channel.